Hey guys, how are you going and welcome to your 17th Svelte tutorial. This one is going to be on component bindings. Okay, so uh, component bindings work in a very similar fashion um, to the previous two videos on input bindings, um, where essentially you're able to uh, bind or sync up a variable with some sort of value on your component this time around as opposed to an input field. Okay, so um, in order to uh, demonstrate exactly why they're useful, we're going to take a look at a example from the previous video on input fields or input field bindings. So right here we have of course the same example, we've got my name and then my name is, okay, and then of course we've simply binded here um, the value of the uh, input field to of course the name variable right there. So now in the browser we can see of course if I was to change uh, the name here to be Mike for example, it is going to update. So. Um, to demonstrate component bindings, we are going to create a custom component for this input field right here, and we're going to use it in the exact same way. So, let's go inside here, let's create a new styled input field dot component and this one like I said it's gonna be styled so maybe uh, maybe you want to have extra styling you want like a box shadow you want some sort of different color or an icon whatever you like essentially this right here is gonna be your reusable input field for the application so we can say here a new input field with a type of text and then we can uh, apply some styles so we can say right up here input and we can add something like a box shadow of 0, 0, uh, 10 px and then RGBA 0, 0, 0 and then something like 0 0.5 and then we can give um, no border okay we can add some padding of 5 px and lastly we can say um, border radius to be something like 10 px so this one here is just some basic styling just to extinguish between our two input fields so now if i want to use this input field right here inside this component we can simply firstly just import the styled input field from uh, styled input field dot and then we can include it right down here uh, to replace this one the boring one okay so we can say right here styled input field just like that we can save this and then of course we're going to get something like this so we can see that the styled input field is obviously working but of course um, if I was to type in mic it isn't going to sync up my changes so how do we make this input field usable and how do we take advantage of component binding to do so um, so, to achieve that, let's go back inside here. We need to make a few changes to this input field. So firstly, we need to define a variable right up here, or should I say a prop right up here. So we can say uh, export let uh, value right there, and we can default the value to be an empty string. So this, uh, this works just like a regular old prop, okay? So then we can just say right down here, bind colon value. So now this right here is just like what we saw in a previous video on bindings. We're simply saying right here we want to bind the value prop right here with this input field. Okay, so now of course just to demonstrate if I was to output the value right down here we should see if I go back inside here we can see now if I was to say for example Mike it's going to appear here just below the input field or uh, next to it. So that right there is the example of the bindings. So that is nothing new. What is new though is how do we actually grab the value from here and put it inside here inside the parent app .svelte. So let's go back inside here. It's very easy. So since we have simply, uh, since we have um, you know, we've, we've got this prop called value, we can then go back inside app.svelte and we can say here, bind, colon, then specify the prop name. In this case, it's going to be value right there, then equals to name. So it works in the exact same way as the previous example on input fields, except this time it's a component. So now it is binding the value prop from this one into the name right here. We can save this, go back inside here and we can see 
we get DOM right there and it is all synced up. Like we, uh, like we just saw, DOM is the default and it's going inside there, it's being passed down and it's all synced up perfectly fine. So now, of course, if I was to change this to mic, we can see it's working just like that. Now, like we saw previously, I can just change this to be value, for example. So we can say value and then value and then we can shorten it. We can just say, sorry, uh, we can just say bind value. Let's save this and we get the exact same result right there. We can say DOM, let's make this decode and it's working perfectly fine. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.